Weapon Types Here I will give a brief introduction to some of the major weapon types found in Line of Contact, each with example video clips. Each weapon type will show how the weapon looks when mounted on a VT, a cockpit view of the selected weapon, what the weapon looks like when it is fired, and a cockpit view of getting hit by that weapon. I'll also include some brief advice on how to counter or avoid the weapon. Smoothbore The smoothbore rifle is a standard direct fire weapon. The projectiles are relatively slow but have a decent range and do respectable damage. It comes with varying bore sizes in the game. Direct fire weapons can generally be avoided by use of the slide step pedal, assuming it is used in time. Artillery. Indirect fire artillery comes in a few flavors within line of contact howitzers, guided mortars, and MLR systems. The weapon is often fired without a positive lock on a target. When being attacked with this weapon, the bomb indicator in the cockpit will flash. The only way to avoid damage is to move out from under the blast radius of the incoming round. Fifth gear wheel mode is usually required to attain the necessary escape velocity. Even this may not be sufficient if the VT has been marked and the attacking artillery VT pilot is manually correcting his aim. Railgun Railguns can be mounted by a few VTs in the game, with some variants being fixed mount. Rails have superior speed, effective range, and do impressive damage. They do require a brief charge-up interval which is visible externally as a circular glow. If timed correctly, a rail shot can be anticipated and slide stepped. Sniper Rifle The sniper rifle can only be equipped by a small subset of ETs within the game. It is a very difficult weapon to use effectively as it requires manual aiming and use of the zoomed manual sniper mode. It also has a rather limited minimum effective range, under which the rounds do no damage. On the plus side, it is a stealthy weapon that does impressive damage per round. VTs that are targeted by snipers will not receive a visual warning or shot indicator on their heads-up display. Sniper rounds can be countered by slide stepping out of the way and closing the distance with an assailant to get under the effective range. Guided Missiles Guided Missiles come in two varieties in the game, self-acquiring and lock-required. Regardless of the type, all missiles have a minimum effective range and can be countered by chaff modules. Melee Weapons Line of Contact has an assortment of melee weapons for use in close combat or ambush. These weapons all require that the attacker be very close and have the body of the VT pointed at the target. A melee attack requires a nearly full battery charge to execute. After the melee attack is triggered, the attacking VT will be temporarily immobile and all weapon locks are dropped. Melee attacks can be avoided if a slide step is performed in time. Mines. Anti-VT mines are available for several VTs in the game and can be used to create effective roadblocks and as a close range attack. Only six mines may be deployed by a single VT at any one time, with any existing mines self-detonating as new mines are deployed. Mines can be visually located by their telltale red blink. Marker Launcher the marker launcher isn't so much a weapon as it is an electronic target marking system. Only certain VTs may mount the marker launcher, 
but if a VT can mount it, I almost always advise pilots to take it. VTs hit with rounds from the marker launcher will show up as a red arrow on the tactical map for two minutes, allowing for position and direction to be determined. This greatly aids in the placement of artillery and ambush strategies. The marker has a proximity effect and is difficult to avoid and cannot be dodged. It does no appreciable damage when it hits, but otherwise undamaged VTs will show 99% armor since the marker does exactly one point of damage, but not 1%. Gauss Emitter The Gauss Emitter, mounted only on the Earthshaker VT, is capable of shutting down VT systems of enemies remotely from a distance of up to 2,000 meters. The weapon fires in a 30 degree arc from the center line of the VT. To fire the weapon, pull the sub-trigger and hold it to charge up the emitters. The longer the charge, the greater the range. The weapon requires that the firing VT remain immobile through the charge up and discharge cycle. The gauss cannot be countered, but moving outside its effective area will prevent the VT from being shut down. Targeted VTs can tell they are in the discharge area by the HUD interference that occurs while the weapon is charging up.